Anytime that you're focusing on something that's scary or fearful, it just is not even helpful. World War Four will be full of sticks and stones. Um, there are very scary things that could happen at any moment. Where if they release a nuclear weapon, yeah. it's like a matter of minutes and we can't tell where it's coming from. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Ginger and Jeremy here. We're back. We're back. And today we want to talk about fear uh, and fear in the face of all the cultural events happening in the world. There's a lot of scary things happening in the world from um, political elections to wars to uncertainty about, about climate and all this stuff. And we want to talk about it. And we want to help give maybe a Christian perspective on some of that. But before we get into that, let's chat. We've been in the new house now for about a month. Yeah. yeah. How's it going? It's been pretty good. We're looking around and realizing how many things need to be done. Yep. Because it's not a new house. It's an old house. It's new for us. It's new it's for us. It's old for the world. Yeah. It's been here for a while. So there are lots of projects. We have a long list of things that need to be done. And so we are just trying to get those things done, checking off the list one thing at a time. We talked in a previous episode, I think it was the first episode, are we leaving Los Angeles? So go back and listen to that if you haven't heard it, but we talked about moving a lot and you're good at moving and Ginge, you've done so much work on these projects and you're good at getting settling, set, settled into a, to a house. Well, thanks. That's kind. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I look around and I'm like, we still have boxes yeah, that we are still in our storage area that need to be unpacked, yeah. put away. But for give the us, most part, we we have like the basics out. Give Everything us an update on need. the kitchen. So the kitchen is still not done. We have our countertops right now have um, just wood on them. There's like plywood on yep. them. Um, we're waiting for the um, quartz to be yeah. put in. So the fabricator um, said he got sick. And so he was pushed back some days. Hopefully we'll, he'll start working again. Um, maybe in a couple of days we'll get those in. Then we'll get a kitchen sink working because we have the sink in. We just don't have the faucet on yet. And so there are lots of things. We actually got our range in this week, which was so exciting. Um, we had a couple little issues with that. We thought we were going to have to send it back because it wouldn't turn on it would not ignite but turned out to be user error. it it was not remember well it wasn't plugged in right it wasn't like it the back panel they yeah. had to have us take off the back panel yeah. and then plug in um the we had to plug in the wires right to the box and so anyhow it was an easy fix thankfully so we didn't have to send the thing back but it's up and cooking now and so now we're able so that to helps. cook but it's harder to still like wash dishes. Right. So we're using all paper products. It's amazing. You don't, it's kind of like health, you know, you don't, you take it, you take it or you take your health for granted until you get a f the flu or you get a cold or yeah. whatever. And then you realize, oh man, you know, I, I really take it for granted when I wake up healthy, feeling totally. invigorated. Yeah. Same thing with the kitchen mm -hmm. because I didn't it's just realize. It's always there. Like your kitchen is just always there. And you don't even think twice about how it. How many times you wash your hands? How many times you wash a little thing? Yeah. You get a drink, you put things away, you get food is, out, a snack here and insane. there. It is insane. And then when it's not there, when you right. don't have a stove, then you're just thinking, okay, how bad do I want to eat dinner tonight? <laughs> I actually am not that hungry <laughs> That's after true. all. That's true. It's actually <laughs> it's impacted like, our diet. We're taking a lot more carbs it's, in. It's insane. Yep. I feel like our diet has been horrible. A lot more because pizza, pizza, uh, yeah. takeout pizza. Yeah, we've done so many Costco meals. pizza runs and yep. just like whatever is easy. I mean, for breakfast, I've been eating yeah. hard boiled eggs almost every morning because I'm an egg person. I eat yep. the same thing for breakfast every single morning. And so I'll scramble like three eggs with a piece of like healthy toast um, every single morning. Yeah. But since this remodel, I've been eating hard boiled eggs, which are fine, yeah. but they're not the real deal. And I've realized that I have a real problem. I'm a convenience eater. So that's why I never cooked a lot even before yeah. getting married, because if it's not convenient, I just, I just don't eat. It takes longer or than I a skip. few minutes. You're just not going to eat. So it, it really takes yes. me to discipline myself to say, okay, I'm going to make a meal. But what I've realized with this kitchen out is... It's it's not convenient for me to even do some of my normal the five dollar meals routine. from like Trader Joe's. So I just either skip or, or I choose smoothie. bad yeah. options. Yeah, 
And that's not good. Yeah, because you want your protein smoothies, but then you're like, uh, yeah. uh, how I've am I going to so, wash this dish? I've been so impacted by the ease of having a kitchen. We're really going to appreciate most, it. Most people who've lived in the world have not had electricity and a quartz countertop. And I've been so impacted by it. I've let it affect my diet. It's terrible. It's okay. Hopefully for not much, like it won't be much longer because yeah. I think that I'd say in the next two weeks, we should have a lot more yeah. put together. It should start to come together. Um, that's the goal. You think it's going to take two weeks? No, but I'm just saying that. Being safe. Because if I say a week and then yeah. it's not a week, we're going to be a little sad. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. So in the next two weeks, we should be settled. I think we're kitchen. taking, in this house, we're taking it room by room. And we just got the workout area set up. Yeah, that so looks that's really nice. good, by the way. Got some stuff moved so, down so there. Good. Uh, kitchen's going to be big. The yard, we've got to put grass in the yard. Oof. Um, got to show you that. But, it's like yeah. a mess. And there are big holes in the yard yep. near the septic tanks. It's like crazy. I just thought the kids could fall in those. No, we block everything off. No, I'm kidding. They're It'll good. be fun. Jump in. <laughs> um, all right. So we're getting settled in the house and things are going well. And so it's been fun. It's, it's a cool house because it's got projects to do. It's, Lots it's, of projects. Yeah, but there are projects that we can take when, when we yeah, want to. whenever we want. You know, it's like yeah. uh, take them as, as, as we have the resources for it and the energy to do it. So yep. I like it. Okay, so that was a little life update. Um, what are we talking about today? Uh, fear. So I want to start with a little story about fear because husbands take note of this. This wasn't a great move by me, but I've been listening to the Lex Friedman podcast. And the Lex Friedman podcast has been good. He's a great conversationalist. He'll have interesting people on and they'll talk for like three and a half hours. And my morning workout routine, every morning I'll, I'll, I'll work out for an hour or so and I'll throw on a podcast and listen. And Lex recently had an author on his podcast, Annie Jacobson. And she wrote recently wrote a book called nuclear war but she's an expert who's really given herself to studying nuclear war so she's really really poured her life into that and i thought this was a fascinating podcast so i discovered all of these facts that if moscow were to press a button we have 27 minutes to make a decision uh, on how we're going to respond you know the the president is given the football where he has six minutes. He's told a nuclear weapon has been launched in our direction. We have to relocate you. You have to decide, will we strike back? And third, if we do strike back, where are we striking back? All within six minutes. And then he gives the order and someone in a bunker under Washington, D.C. presses a button and it happens. And the world goes into nuclear war. And like Einstein said, he doesn't know what weapons World War III will be fought with, but World War IV, World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And so he, Annie Jacobson's telling us all this stuff on this Lex Friedman podcast. I'm listening to this. I think if North Korea were to uh, launch a nuclear weapon, we have like 31 minutes or something to react. But then I had the bright idea of coming back and... Hey, Ging, <laughs> you'll never believe. Like if we're at the beach and there's like a, like a nuclear... Submarine. Um, submarine. Then, I mean, it'll just like well, annihilate Well, so that's us. the crazy it's thing. so crazy. Is, is that's a crazy thing. So we know some of the locations or general areas of where nuclear weapons could be coming at us from. So if something's launched from one of these countries, we say, California. okay, we have this long. California is the place. Well, if we, <laughs> the, the reality is we found nuclear subs within 200 yeah. miles of our shoreline that are loaded, where if they release a nuclear weapon, yeah. it's like a matter of minutes. And we can't tell where it's coming from and we don't have a response because we don't know who, who's sending it. And so all of these, I mean, this podcast went deep and it was like three hours of deep conversation to that. And they talked about the challenge that the person who actually presses the button to respond. Yeah. Where they have That's to think wild. like, I'm, a, I'm essentially dooming the world to destruction. Do I obey the command? And there was actually one point, see, I'm, I'm telling you again, which was the whole point of the story is, but I, I, there was, I, I think a guy in Russia who was given that command and he, he refused to obey it. And it turned out that there actually hadn't been a, a nuclear weapon launched. And so he, by not obeying the command, he saved Whoa. the world, but then he was fired because he, it had to be, he didn't obey the command. 
Crazy. Anyway, you guys can fact check me on that one. But I'm listening to this podcast yeah. and I get the bright idea to come home and say, hey, Ginge, let me tell you what I've discovered about nuclear war. And I was like, why did you tell me that? I don't need to know this information. If I die from a nuclear attack, I die from a nuclear attack, but I don't need to know that it's looming. Right. And so I, I, I listened to this and was like fascinated and said, this is wild. We're one button push away from yep. nuclear winter. You didn't have the same reaction. No, I was like, I felt like I would just rather not know. And then if ev anything ever goes wrong, then I'm like, ignorance is know. bliss. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt really bad because you, I think at one point even were like, oh, I don't need to know this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is really fascinating. You should hear this. <laughs> and so I kind of was so amped up on it. I just told the story without uh, really taking into consideration whether you wanted to hear it or not. I'm sorry for that. No, it was okay. I just, yeah, I think I need to actually sometimes know what's happening around me, but a lot of times I feel like it just produces fear yeah. in us. And so, and you had, I mean, even that night, I think you, you had some dreams or it was like, it was crazy because I think, yeah, yeah I think that happens sometimes, but it's right. like, it was just kind of like, I think in my mind, anytime that you're focusing on something that's scary or fearful, then, um, it just is not even helpful. Right. And so it's not like I want to be oblivious to what's happening in the world around me because right. I know there's so much brokenness, pain. Um, there are very scary things that could happen at any moment. Um, and that's how life is. And so I don't want to be like, oh, I can't handle that. Right. Um, but then with something like that, I was like, okay, I don't need to know this. I don't need to know what's gonna ha what could happen, you know. And had, had you ever... Uh, read about nuclear war or no, anything like never, that? No, never, never. It's interesting. I, I think a lot of people who are somewhat maybe familiar, you know, knowing there's nuclear weapons and what they are, but Oppenheimer coming out last summer, I think, or is it this past summer? It actually raised a ton of awareness. And I remember seeing billboards around here in LA saying like research, you know, with, with Oppenheimer, it's like research the facts and it had, you know, Oppenheimer facts or something.com and, and people would go, and that's on a real website, I don't think so. But it was something like that. And it kind of got people talking again about the ethics of nuclear weapons and what we can do, I guess, in, in the West to stop it, put an end to it, the production of them. Um, so it's a fascinating conversation. But I think some people forget or aren't aware of the threat that's looming over us. Yeah, and we know that um, there will always be difficult things that come up in our life, and we know that this world is not our home. And so we, we have these certain realities, right, of like, okay, this this is like there's gonna, there are going to be wars. There's going to be um, things that come up that are really difficult, and we don't want to be living in in fear gripped by fear or paranoid mm. of like everything around us um and i think right. that that can quickly become our response when we're not focused on just trusting in god knowing that he would give us yeah. you know help to like get through whatever he allows um and anyhow i think it's just it's such a crazy thing but whenever something like that that's so outside of your control comes right. up you realize like okay we don't want to trust in people we don't trust in um, like anything except for yeah. just having our hearts and minds focused on Christ and, and doing the work of God and knowing where we're going to go right. when we die. And then that gives you peace. Right. Um, but it's like crazy when, whenever we're talking about nuclear war and like these submarines that could just be, right. they're out there. Looming. Yeah. You really, I think what it did listening to that conversation <laughs> and then us talking about it and me seeing your response to it, because I thought you were just going to be like, wow, that's crazy. But you were really like, affected by that. Why did you tell that. me? Why did yeah. you tell me that? I don't need to know <laughs> it's that. Like, I didn't need to know that. But, but to be reminded of just how fragile the world is that we're living yeah. in. And I mean, we, we realize like we are fragile too. Like it just like within seconds, you know, something could happen to us. Yeah, and we realize like good. that, that reminder is good for us. It yeah. is good to like refocus and think of your priorities, think of what you're doing and, um, and where you stand before God. 
Yeah, that's that's such a good uh, train of thought to go down because even the most powerful dictator in the world who has believed his own delusions of grandeur that he is, you know, a demigod is a breath away from meeting his real maker. And we think of the fragility of our own bodies. Um, you're just a few minutes away of if, if not breathing from from death. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't really walk through our life thinking like that. And so when we see reminders or hear reminders of that, it hits us and it, it, it makes us pause and, and gives us all sorts of reactions. And I think one of those responses is a reaction of fear, can mm -hmm. be a reaction of fear. Yeah. Um, and just, if you just think about, yeah, some basic realities of this world that we're living in, and you think of all the people that have evil motives and want to destroy, or even you just see it in our country with, with mass shootings or um, the, the disruptions we see with, with riots or whatever where violence is striking. And we, we just have to ask, like, what is our response? Because a natural response is fear. Mm -hmm. uh, d d talk about, because I know you're not a big TV news watcher. Is that a choice you've made? Because uh, where I want to go with that is a lot, a lot of that's designed to, to, you know, stir up fear. Right, yeah. But you don't really get into like the nah, Fox News, so CNN, the political. I will sit down and I will watch like, I'll watch um, KCAL News here in LA. Do you know why? I'll get Talk roped in about to it. that. So that's what I get roped into for like okay, two explain hours. Explain to the non-Angelinos or Californians why you can get roped into kcal local news for two hours sky news really it's okay, like the yes, sky, news. sky news so the reason i get roped into that like like the other night um we had jared's parents here and they came into the room to like watch well we home were videos. gonna watch home videos they were gonna watch home videos child, my childhood they come into our room and i'm sitting on the bed and i'm glued i'm glued to it because they have a police chase on and it was a carjacking and of course, they have all the live footage. Anytime I happen to turn on the TV and that's the thing that's on, I'm like, I can't stop watching it. I will sit there for two hours and waste that time watching this. It it's wasted, not a waste though? of time. It is not a waste of time. I'm learning a lot of helpful information. I'm learning why the person decided to steal the car, why they're chasing them, how many suspects are in there, are the suspects armed? I'm learning a lot of vital information. You're also learning that you're never going to get away. <laughs> and you're never going to get away. They will try. They will try to like run. Like this one the other night we watched was insane. It was crazy. They had this guy. He was driving a car he had stolen. Um, and he had been driving for like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then we were we were sitting there watching this, like supposed to be watching home videos. Um, and right as we thought, oh, the guy's going to give up. He stopped. I said, oh, he's not going to give up. Yeah. They never do. And so he stopped in, in a parking lot. And the car just is rolling away as he runs out of it. And he jumps in another car. And there was like a getaway car. Another guy was driving this car. And he took off. So then they go on a long, a long drive. And then they hop in another car. They like pulled slowly into this place. And at this point, I mean, he's chased by so many officers. I think there were like five on his tail. You have the copters above that are like shining mm -hmm. their spotlights. It's late at night. It's wild. They're on the interstate. They're in neighborhoods. They're always looking for like an escape route, you know, he turned like his lights off go under the bridge and then like run away. But it was funny. He turned his lights off for a while. So yeah. Get, but going he, 100 and the, 120 on the interstate right, with his headlights the, off. It's the, so dangerous. The spotlight from the helicopter beaming down. Yes. On him. It's like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. you really think you're going to get away? So, yes. So I he get actually, into that. in the end, he actually did get away, that guy. Escaped. No, he no, didn't. I'm kidding. But we had he to stop really watching do. because he went into um, LAX airspace, and so the helicopter couldn't keep following. But they, that was we, tough. we looked it up later. Did you see it? Oh, you did? Oh, my word. Yes. They have the whole thing. So I think it was LAPD, like, released it later. Oh, no way. So they, of course, were allowed in that airspace, and so they showed them. Right. Um, they put it out. And so it's, it's fascinating. There oh, were wow. actually three people involved in this carjacking. And none of them got away? No, none of them got Was away. Was anybody hurt? No, I mean, no no major things. They did hit a car at one point, but I don't think they were going that fast, thankfully. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully those people are okay. But that's what I get roped into. Right. So the news, like the normal news, I'll turn it on here and there. 
and like every once in a while I'll turn on the news and just kind of see what's up. But I feel like we have news on our phones. We could always look at. Okay. I just don't all but the time. But you don't really get sucked into that. But I think the reason I asked that, and that was a great aside, by the way. I just had to go That's on that a little, little thing. Bit. It's a very a LA, LA thing to do, but it's yeah. like you just watch the car chases. <sighs> well, I remember our first week here in Los Angeles, and we were in North Hollywood, and helicopters were flying really low overhead, and I took video of it, and I sent it to some of my buddies. Like, look at all these helicopters. They were like, yeah. Welcome to Los Angeles. And you shouldn't be in the middle of them because you yeah. never know what's going to happen. When they're circling your house, it's a problem. There were a couple times at like our our very old house in North Hollywood where um, I was like walking along with Felicity in the stroller and the helicopter started going over and my neighbors were like, come in her yard. Come stand with us. We don't want you out there with a baby because you don't yep. know who's coming down your way. So there was a time where I left the church to walk home and we lived pretty close by the church at the time and all we were in the middle of the roads that were cut off by the cops and Wild. the helicopters overhead so you're like oh i'm i'm in the crime zone so whoever they're chasing is here somewhere insane uh so it's it's a different vibe but that okay i get it that's an aside we will get sucked into those chases and it really is a thing they never get away. So don't do it, obviously. Rarely get away. Just Sometimes they yeah, do. You just rack up your charges. Yeah. But it, it, a lot of people do get sucked into the yes. news. And they and start to believe every little thing. And then yeah. they like get so paranoid with fear that they don't want to yeah. go out of their house. And there is a paralysis that happens because yeah. if you think about it, especially I, I, I think people will be, be able to relate to this too. All the reels on social media mm-hmm. telling us what's dangerous. Yes. Everything is dangerous now. Yes, literally everything. I mean, if you're eating healthy, it's like, okay, if you have, um, you know, like a certain kind of water you're drinking now, this water today, like yep. I was about to put in a reverse osmosis system and then my sister's like, oh, actually, I don't think that's healthy for you. Yep. Now so drinking then I'm out of like, water bottles well, is should I drink out of the fridge? And they're like, yep. no, the fridge water is actually bad for you. So we're drinking out of water yep. bottles right now and I know those are not healthy for us, but that's like what we had the option to do in our <laughs> right. kitchen remodel. Until I get my Berkey back up. Because the Berkey is good. For now. For now. I was talking Until to someone the not. other day when they're, I remember years ago, they said, don't eat eggs. It'll it'll give you, uh, it, it's bad for your heart. Now they're saying, oh. eat, eat eggs every day. I was going to say, if that's the case, I, I eat them every morning. Um, I'm, so I'm screwed. With these like creative reels that people are putting out, which is kind of news. And a lot of it, you don't know what's legitimate yes. or not. But it'll yeah. make you terrified of everything. It'll yeah. make you terrified of going to the pool because... You'll hear about this event. It'll make you terrified of driving because. And you know what I think it is too? Like in this culture where everything is so accessible, like we hear about everything that goes wrong. Yeah. Because back before, like with our parents and stuff, they would have had less of that because they'd have the normal news. They'd have the newspaper. They'd have the normal news that runs, you know, but now it's like with social media you get live footage of stuff that's happening in your neighborhood around, around you, world. which yeah. some of that is like helpful to be up to date with because we need that yeah. info. But on the other side, like you said, it's yeah. like you can just fill your mind only with that and become yeah. so paralyzed with fear that you don't want to yeah. do anything. Like you don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to put yourself in danger. You don't want to get in a car. Right. You don't want to do that. And then you're just like, so afraid of everything around you. So uh, Jonathan Edwards, who is the great 17th century uh, theologian, um, w- it was said of him and people of that era. So just f- two, 300 years ago, um, one edition of the New York Times would have contained more international news than they would have heard in their lifetime. And so we are inundated with facts. Mm. We're inundated if if something happens in Michigan at a school, we're, we're told about it immediately. It pops mm-hmm. up. In fact, we're notified. So I have New York Times notifications on my phone. So an article comes out, boom, notified. Just swipe left on your iPhone and you have all the news outlets, everything that's happening. And we just peruse it. And it it's interesting because it loses the, its impact. We go, oh, there's more ceasefire negotiations in Gaza. Okay, next article. And it's just like, wait, that's... That has massive implications for millions of lives and people are dying. And that's such a massive headline. It's more than a headline. It's, it's lives, it's um, livelihoods, it's people, people's you know, countries and homes. And we just go, okay, cool headline, next. And so 
in one sense, it it actually has less impact. It can have less impact because mm-hmm. it's just another headline. But in another sense, it can actually drive fear and paralysis. And for people who absorb themselves with that, it can cripple them where it's like you can't go outside because there's UV rays. You can't get in your car because of accidents. You can't eat healthy food because the pesticides. You can't eat unhealthy food because of the preservatives. You can't drink this water. You can't go to this beach because there's Mm -hmm. sharks there and those shark videos are nuts. I mean, I still am afraid of getting in the water at the beach. In Florida that two people got attacked by the same sharks. Yes, yes. I'm still just, I, I stay, video. I love going to the beach, yeah. but I don't like getting in the water. Yeah, I know it. But because there, <laughs> there's, there's massive man-eating fish out there. So yeah. this this fear uh, can can really paralyze us. Yeah, it can. And so how, how do Christians approach it? And I think you uh, hit on something earlier you said, because I think it's, it's, um, the the first reality we have to recognize from Mm -hmm. the scriptures which is we're not promised in this life Mm -hmm. that it's going to be all cotton candy and rainbows yeah there will be trials there'll be tribulations there'll be wars there will be famines there'll be a lot of things that we experience you're quoting jesus yeah i mean he's saying this is going to happen yeah and that's been human history Mm -hmm. um it's interesting the rise of humanism this philosophy that people have it inside of themselves we're good enough we have the solution we can solve man's problems with the goodness of our own hearts this humanistic philosophy was on the uptick at the turn of the 20th century and people were saying god's dead we are god essentially we have the solution and then enter the scene two world wars where more bloodshed was slaughtered in the 20th century than all 19 previous centuries combined at the height of our technological advances and at the height of our supposed evolutionary thought and advancement. We took that advancement and used it to slaughter more of each other than in all previous 19 centuries combined. It was the bloodiest century in human history and it, was a resounding death knell in the the coffin of humanism by by proving this isn't the answer we are not the answer because we're not solving it we're we're only we're only the more advanced we're getting the the worse we're treating each other in a sense and so um as as we look at this world it's always been since the fall into sin a place of destruction and a terrifying place a terrifying place and so the scriptures talk about that i mean if you read ecclesiastes if you read Mm -hmm. the psalms nowhere are we promised you know until christ returns until the the eternal kingdom is established uh, christ's eternal kingdom we're going to have trial we're going to have tribulation and and so recognizing that actually um helps us goodness what does it help us do have a sense of reality like yeah i think like we want to be like just grounded and realize like okay it is sober-mindedness really like it makes us think about yeah. what we're doing with our life what we're doing that actually matters and how we're serving christ how we're serving those around us and like really like the the brevity of life yeah like it just makes you think about that like you yeah. said in ecclesiastes like it's it's all like vanity, like all these things right. that we're doing for life is Havel. Life yeah, is a, a like vapor. We're yeah. doing these things to like impress others or to like right. make a name for ourselves. And then at the end of the day, when you think about the realities of what happens right. whenever tragedy strikes, it's like that's taken away right. and who you are is in at the core of who you are is all that matters before right. God, before like what others thought about you right. and what, um, kind of name you made for yourself on this world. It's like, if you're so consumed with yourself and with, um, you know, just climbing the ladder to success, it's like, well, what is that? What is that even shows matter? you how superficial that success is yeah. in such a broken world. Yeah. And, and so I think that would drive us to the second reality. So the first is recognizing the brokenness of this world and devastation. And secondly, and you brought this up earlier before uh, as well that, okay, you better, you better know, what happens mm-hmm. when you face that destruction yeah. like a take care of your your soul 
Mm-hmm. I mean, the most important question anyone can ask is, where do I go when I die? Mm-hmm. What happens when I die? Yeah. And the Bible has answers. It is appointed for every man to die and at death judgment. Mm-hmm. So you're going to stand before your creator. And so whatever, um, whatever way that happens, whether it was you consume too many plastics because you drank out of water bottles, plastic water bottles, or it's because of the, the nuclear war that Annie Jacobson is telling yeah. us may happen at any moment. You're but I think realizing, realizing too that we can't change the day that we're going to die. Like God right. is appointed us for us to like, we know right. God knows what day we're going to die. Right. And so we can't like, we, we want to eat healthy. We want to take care of our bodies totally. as good stewards, but we also realize like we can't change that. And so us yeah. worrying about it, worrying about that is not going to add any length to our lives. And so yeah. I think that that's another important reality because I can fall into fear often and I think that I have to realize, like, I don't want to think about all of those things and what could go wrong and the what ifs, but it's, right. it's important for all of us just to like refocus and think about, okay, why am I here? What am I doing right now that is going to last for eternity? What am I doing that actually matters and wanting to glorify God in everything that I do right now with what he's given me. And right. if tomorrow that changes to tragedy, if tomorrow, you know, you get cancer or you have this difficulty that arises just knowing that God is good and he is trustworthy even in the midst of that is something that we all have to remember yeah you're so you reminded me of Jesus words in Matthew 6 Matthew 6 25 therefore I tell you do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you'll put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothes looking at the look at the birds of the air they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns Mm -hmm and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Mm -hmm. Your anxiety is not going to make your life longer. Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven... Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious. Um, the, and then he closes saying, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not, not, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day as its own trouble. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is combining there those two realities we're talking about. This is a troubled world, mm-hmm. but you're not, by you worrying about it, you're not going to add a, mm-hmm. a, a, a moment to your life. Yeah. It's been appointed. But then for the Christian, the response is, so be ready Yeah, to meet your maker, mm-hmm. which will give you knowing that, that Christ has given us eternal life in him gives me a security about whatever I can face in this world, whether it's the valley of the shadow of death mm-hmm. or it's the heights of joy and peace my shepherd is walking me through it. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there's life, there's joy. And so that provides a comfort and peace and peace. Yeah. But there's also something about there's, it doesn't create a passivity to the brokenness in this world. Mm -hmm. Does it? Yeah. I think it's interesting because we are in the world, like we live in this broken world. And Mm -hmm. so we will experience pain and it will hurt when we lose a loved one. And we will feel the brokenness of this world in a very tangible way. And so that's not like, we're not exempt from that, from experiencing that. Um, And I think even me not wanting to like watch the news is not always a good thing, right? Like there, I need to realize some of the realities of this world that are happening around us and to know how to like pray for those who are in the midst of that and, and how to like serve those people, you know? And so I think it's not good that's not a good response just to run away from it because it's like, I think the over saturation of our culture Mm -hmm. in that like news world and that news cycle or the constant scrolling, those things are not helpful. Right. But it's also important for us to know as Christians, like, no, we can hear this news and we can experience hardship and pain and we have hope. So we need to be ready to offer that hope to others. Yeah, we have, you know, I was saying before, the comforts of the West and, and what we can do is we can fall back into that and say, okay, I'm going to ignore the headlines. I'm going to ignore the brokenness of this world and I'm just going to enjoy my creature comforts a- until the day I die and then just 
get go slide into death as as calmly and as comfortably as possible but that's not the right response Mm -hmm. because we recognize that we've been given comforts especially living in the west Um, we've been given opportunities and resources that so many people don't have around the world well we're not only given those to enjoy there's an aspect of god gives us all things to enjoy but there's it's also a resource to serve others yeah and so how are we using our western wealth to help those who don't have that? How are we helping those in our immediate communities Mm -hmm. who are abandoned or Mm -hmm. who are hurting, Mm -hmm. who are struggling? Are we just indifferently looking at them and saying, well, it's tough to be you. I'm glad I I don't have the same fate. Or are we using the resources God has given us to reach into those broken areas Mm -hmm. and bring the hope of the gospel, which is the ultimate hope, but also to serve those people in, as Christ serves us. Mm. So the Christian response isn't one of sat oversaturation in the fear mongering of network news of, Oh, we're all going to die and let's freak out about it. Um, nor is it complete passivity pulling away. Mm. We have a personal comfort that we have a savior who's redeemed us, who's promised us eternal life. And while this world is broken, we have a shepherd who's walking us through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, Psalm 23 is such a comfort mm-hmm. because, you know, whether it's dark or light, your shepherd is with you. And that reality of Romans 8, 28, he's working all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But then there's also a mandate that while we're here as pilgrims in this, in this world, we are to be Christ's hands and feet. And so we are those firemen who run into the burning building. We're not those who move towns and and ignore it. You know, there's an interesting story about Martin Luther, the reformer. Mm -hmm. When the bubonic plague hit um, in Germany, the people uh, fled. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, if you look through history, you'll often see there there was a saying in Rome, that um, ancient Rome, that when plagues would come through, the first people to leave were the priests and the um, the religious priests and the doctors. And they would go to their country homes and abandon the people that they were serving and flee. And so in their, their moment of greatest need, the doctors are out. The same happened in the bubonic plague. And it was Martin Luther and his wife who stayed and said, no, we're going to stay amongst the people and we're going to make our home a refuge for the sick. Mm. And miraculously, they never, they never got it. They survived the mm. plague. But... Um, that's w- Christians are called to run into the fire, mm-hmm. into the brokenness. And I think because we have a message of hope. Yeah. So we have a message of, of hope on a personal level, but we also have a cosmic level hope, which is, you know, Revelation 21, when Christ returns, he will wipe away every tear mm-hmm. from their eye. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be pain nor mourning mm-hmm. for the old things have passed away. Behold, he's making all things new. So in the face of this brokenness, we, this longing for it to not be like this Mm -hmm. is actually proving we weren't, this world isn't supposed to be this way. Mm -hmm. And our creator is coming back to make it all right, Mm -hmm. which is incredibly hope filling yeah, and provides us with joy and comfort in the midst of Mm -hmm. The pain, even if it's the pain that you see across international lines of war or the personal pain you're feeling because of a broken body or broken relationships, Mm -hmm. we we look ultimately to the day when it's, it's going to be made right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good, babe. That was so helpful. I think, especially because we are surrounded with so much darkness, difficulty, and suffering and so I think it's good just to get that reminder before our eyes of the hope that we have and to like keep our eyes fixed on Christ and that hope um to like propel us to love and serve those around us and not to just be like isolated in fear but to actually do something that is productive and helpful right now with the resources that God's given us yeah I I I pulled up first Peter because if people are listening and they want to dig deeper into something Mm -hmm. like this in scripture, where do they go? I'd say go to first Peter because the book of first Peter, if you've never read it, you'll, you'll love it. 
um, if you've read it before and you need to be reminded of it, jump in because it opens Peter saying he's describing the hope of the Christian, which is, this is how he describes it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he's caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So because Jesus rose from the dead, we will too. We have a living hope to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And he says, in this you rejoice. But then immediately he says, though now you go through trials. So he's saying, Christian, you're looking forward to heaven. It's amazing. It's kept for you. It's imperishable, but you're not there yet. So then the rest of the book is how do you live in this life as, as an alien in a foreign land? How do you live in this life that's so difficult to walk through with your eye on that, on that coming hope? Mm-hmm. And it's just so practical. That's so good. Babe. Because we, uh, we, mm-hmm. we're not there yet. You know, the Christian hope of heaven, we're, we're not in heaven yet. Mm-hmm. And we've got to go through the brokenness of this world. So I guess to bring it full circle, as we, as we battle fear, there's some concrete hope that we can find in the Bible. Ultimately, it's in the gospel, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Finding rest for our souls, I think, yeah. is so helpful because then no matter what comes our way, we know that we, right. this world is not our home and that we are secure in Christ. Yeah. yeah, and the beautiful gospel that because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, lived the life we couldn't, died the death we deserve. He took the punishment of sin upon himself so that so that we could be set free to live mm-hmm. eternally with him, so that we could escape the brokenness of this world and, and enjoy a paradise of, of eternal life with him because of what he's done. So the call is put your faith in Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Turn from your sin, put your faith in Christ, and hold on to this hope. You know, I, I, I do see a lot of people paralyzed by fear, and I get it. And I think without Jesus, I don't, I don't know how I would get through this world. Mm, yeah. I mean, with everything that's facing us mm-hmm. from nuclear submarines to contaminated water bottles, it's a scary world, but the Christian has hope. That's good. All right. I like it. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for it. hanging out. Subscribe, like. Hey, leave comments. Uh, every once in a while, we'll do a Q&A. Yeah. So I'd love if you, to hear any of your questions that you would like us to answer. So yeah. go ahead and drop those. Leave um, us a review below. on whatever platform you're on. It helps other people find the podcast. So thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out. See you.